r slash no sleep posted by you slash dust of cosmos mother's rules when i was young i lived in a small cabin in a forest with my mother and my sister it wasn't completely isolated from society but it was about a mile away from the rest of the town she did all she could to keep us safe and had many rules for us to follow most of them were normal don't go out at night or make sure you don't get in trouble in school but others were much stranger a rule I was told after my sixth birthday was to never swim in the pond. Not only could I not swim in it, but I was not allowed to go near it at night time. At the time, I was confused, but I wish I had adhered to it. Years later, my sister and I decided to go near it. We were curious, and didn't think anything bad would happen to us. As we were observing the pool, I saw that the water looked a bit off. It was too murky to see the depths of it, but I could definitely see something in it. I brushed it off as just my mind playing tricks on me, or maybe an animal that lived there. My sister stuck her hand into it, to prove there was nothing to be afraid of. Then she screamed and pulled her hand out. Something bit me, she said. Her hand was red and bloody, and we ran out of the clearing and brought it to her mother. She reprimanded us for not listening to her rule, and cleaned off my sister's wound. After it was cleaned off, I noticed something about the wound. The bite marks didn't look like an animal. Quite the contrary they looked like a human's. After this incident, my mother made sure to watch over us more carefully. She didn't let us stay home alone for years after that. Finally, when we were around 15, she let us stay alone for a few hours, as she had to work a bit longer at her job. She told us how to properly use the stove, and gave us a couple of recipes to cook if we were hungry. Finally, before she left, she told us if you hear a knock on the door, don't open it. I have a key. I was pretty confused by this rule, and I'd assume my sister was too, but we brushed it off. After she left, I took out our Monopoly game, and we started playing. Mother didn't like us playing this, since we always get into fights over who won. In the middle of the game, I heard a knock. Mother's home, said my sister. I had forgotten about her warning, so we walked toward the door. Just before I put my hand toward the doorknob, I remembered the warning. Wait. Mom told us to not open the door if we hear a knock. She paused, and tried to get a look at who, or what, might have knocked on our door. I could swear that I saw something at the door, but it was too dark to see. I don't see anyone, she said. She turned, and looked at me. What if whoever's at the door is dangerous? I've heard stories of children being kidnapped by a stranger who showed up at the door. We ran from the door and hid in our room. From it, we could still hear the knocks, seemingly more aggressive. I heard our mother's voice calling us, telling us to open the door. With my hands shaking, I called the phone number of my mom's workplace on the family phone. She answered, and asked me if anything was wrong. Mom, someone's knocking on the door. They sound like you, I said. She said nothing. I could hear her breathing heavily. I'll come home right now, please don't leave the house, she said. She hung up, and I put the phone down. Then, I heard my sister scream. There's something at the window she said. I looked, and sure enough, I saw a figure standing there. What was strange, was that it didn't look human. The face was blocked, but I could see that the arms and legs were a bit too long for its body, and the clothes didn't fit right. My sister then shined a light through the window to see its face. I turned away. It already looked creepy enough, and I didn't want to get nightmares. She screamed, and when I asked her what she saw, she shook her head. I can't tell you, she said. At that moment, I saw our mother's car pulling in on the driveway. As soon as she stepped out of the car, the figure standing at the doors and went on all fours, and crawled away. After our mother entered the house, we told her what had happened, and how my sister had seen the figure. Let's pack our bags. It knows your face. After these two incidents, my mother decided that we needed to move. She sold the cabin, and we moved to a spacious house in the middle of a large field. There was nothing around it, except for a shed that was right on the edge of the property. She told us to never go near it, although this time she gave a reason. The shack is broken down, and there's lots of rusty nails. You might hurt yourselves, she told us. This time we listen, and it really wasn't her fault of what happened next. One day, a couple of my friends came over for a sleepover. We had lots of fun, painting each other's nails, having pillow fights, watching movies, and of course, trying to summon ghosts slash demons with a Ouija board. When that didn't work, they suggested we go to the shack. Legend has it that somebody died there, but when people came to look, there was no body. One of my friends said. 
With my experiences of the paranormal, I somewhat believed the story. I didn't want anything to do with the shack. But as they started sharing more stories, even my sister joined in. Come on. It'll be fun. Don't be a scaredy cat, she said. So of course, I went along with it. We walked it to the shack, and when we got there, it was already staring to get dark. The door was locked, which was strange, considering that nobody had been here for years. I knocked on the door hello? Is anyone there? I said. I heard scratching from inside the shack, but no words, so I assumed it was a raccoon, or some other animal. My sister took her hairpin, and picked the lock. She slowly opened the door, and we stepped inside. As soon as we entered the shack, we were immediately hit with the putrid smell of rotting flesh. It was quite dark, so I couldn't see much, but I could make out the figure of somebody crouched in the corner. Then it moved. The movement was so sudden and violent that I passed out. I never was a huge horror fan myself, and I had a weak stomach for these sorts of things. My sister, on the other hand, loved horror, and was really brave. She stayed, so whatever is recounted next will be from a text message she sent to me. After you passed out, the creature turned its head, and started walking toward us. Its eyes were hollow, and completely destroyed, but it still resembled a human. There was patches of flesh that was gone, and some parts of its body was just bone. It slowly shambled towards us, and we ran. I had to literally drag you out of the shack. After we got out, you woke up. We told our mother what had happened, and she scolded us for falling for peer pressure. As is expected, the sleepover had ended drove our friends back to their houses, and told their parents that there was a wasp infestation in our house, and we have to call an exterminator. Now, my sister and I are living fairly normal lives, and our mother lives in an apartment close to my house. But sometimes, one wonders about their past. Just a week ago, I found out where our old house was. It's in Nevada, in, redacted, forest. I called her, and we decided to figure out, once and for all, what was in the pond. One long road trip later, we arrived in the forest, and soon found the house. I marveled at how even after 20 years, it still looked the same as before, but just a bit more. Eerie. We walked toward the pool, and stared at it for a couple of minutes. Nothing moved. My sister dropped a granola bar into the pool, and suddenly, there was a frenzy of movement. A rotting, disgusting corpse-like creature pulled itself out of the pool. From behind the trees, I could see part of a humanoid creature. My sister identified what it was. It was that weird monster that tried to get into our house. We ran out of there as fast as we could, and drove away in my car. All that is behind me now, but sometimes, out of the corner of my eye, I see a strange figure, crouching behind the trees, watching my every move.